Jesus's entire mission was about unity, a task St. Paul takes as his hallmark mission. In fact, Paul saw unity as so central to the Christian message that he spent much of his ministry wrestling with questions of how diverse communities, Jews and Gentiles, slaves and free, men and women, could come together as one in Christ. He coined the concept of the body of Christ, one body with many parts, unity in diversity. Unity is possibly the hardest of all Christian ideals. Jesus told the scribe that the greatest commandments were loving God and neighbor. And then it later says that no one dared ask him any more questions. Perhaps this was just too hard of a teaching that they were afraid to hear more such teachings. In our Ephesians passage today, Paul presents a unity, not just as a calling, but as a practice. He invites humility, gentleness, and patience as a practical path to unity, imploring us to make every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit, indicating it's an ongoing practice rather than a one-time achievement. Whenever I sense disunity in a relationship, I quickly realize that my patience and humility has gone out the window. Unity is the whole charism of the global focolare movement, founded on Jesus' prayer that all may be one. Around the world, focolare communities practice dialogue across cultural and religious boundaries, creating spaces where people of different faiths and backgrounds can encounter one another authentically, striving for unity through their art of loving, a practice of unconditional love that transcends differences while celebrating them. Chiara Lubick, the founder of the Focolare movement, saw each person as a candidate for unity. In other words, each of us has the potential to bring about community in our world. The danger is interpreting Paul's writing to the Ephesians as being about uniformity rather than unity. God doesn't want us all to be the same. As Jonathan Sachs says, unity creates diversity. We come from God, from one source, but God creates in manifold ways. Our oneness is found in our source. Our oneness is again the many parts that make up the whole of the body. Jesus called us to the simple principles of loving God and neighbor. There's a beautiful paradox here. The simpler we make our fundamental principles, the more space we create for genuine diversity. I teach the Enneagram, which for me symbolizes the beauty of human personality and variation. There are nine dominant personality types or ways of engaging with the world, but all nine are necessary. No one is better or worse than another, despite what we might think about our own personality quirks. We're not meant to be the same. Just look around. Doesn't God love diversity? There are 8 million species of animals in the world. No two people share the same DNA or fingerprints. We have thousands of languages and such a vast diversity in our physical traits, cultures, and individual talents. Yet we're one human family, one family of creation, all part of one universe. Julian of Norwich spoke about humanity's oneing with God and creation. It's not a process of achieving union with God, but rather awakening to the union that already exists. It already exists. I think Paul got this. We weren't the body of Christ becoming. We were the body of Christ already. We need to be awakened to this truth so we can see the unity that already is. Paul said we need to maintain this unity with all our effort. This unity and diversity that we see in nature and in human community reflects the very nature of God. 
The Trinity shows us how difference and unity can coexist in perfect harmony. Just as the Father, Son, and Spirit maintain their distinct identities while being perfectly one, we too are called to this dance of unity that celebrates rather than erases our differences. Now that effort is both external through humility, gentleness, and patience with our fellow human beings, but also requires internal work, awakening to the oneing, the unity we already have. Perhaps this is why unity remains such a challenging ideal. It requires us to hold together what seem like opposites, difference and communion, uniqueness and oneness, distinction and unity. Yet this is precisely the mystery at the heart of faith, revealed in the Trinity and reflected in all creation. When we embrace this mystery, we begin to see that true unity isn't about making everyone the same, but about discovering the deeper oneness that allows all our differences to become gifts rather than divisions.